Here we have Kodiak disc brake kit for uh, both sides of the axle. This kit is for Dexter, 10,000 pound axle with number 99 spindles. This kit contains the brackets that are holding the calipers, one for the left, one for the right. That includes all the bolts that are grade eight bolts and nuts. And then we have the rotors, spacers, again the bracket and the screws. The kit also includes calipers, brackets and two little bolts that's holding the caliper down. They also have ceramic brake pads. And here we have two types of bolts. The first set right here in front is the silver bolts that are a 12 point head uh, socket you need for this is a 12 point half inch socket uh, this socket is not included in the kit I just put it there for information also the second set is the black bolts they require a uh, quarter inch drive hex bit socket also it's not included in the kit I just put here for you to see it and again we have on the left side the uh, caliper with the brake uh, ceramic pads. Let me tell you a little bit about these uh, calipers. They are cast iron, which means they're not flexible. They're, they're not flexible like the aluminum ones. So these are really good. They also have two pistons and they are chrome pistons, very large, enough power to stop heavy vehicles with the ceramic brake pads. So again, this kit is for a Dexter 10,000 pound axle general duty. And then I'm gonna show you um, on the next video, in the next step, how we're installing everything. Also, this kit do not include other things that are purchased separate, like the hub, 10,000 pound hub. You could see also the model number on this hub, 008 430-03 it's a Dexter hub it doesn't include the bearings seal oil cap nuts and washers so these things are purchased separate if you need them but that uh, Kodiak kit is for this type of hub and it's for Dexter axle once again the kit is here everything is included and I will show you also how we get everything installed. Also, the silver bolts are uh, being installed for the spacer to the hub and the black bolts are being installed on the rotor to the spacer. So this is the kit and then I will show you how we get it installed. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to remove the wheels and the electric brakes from a uh, three-car trailer, which is very popular in the car uh, hauler industry. This is a Kaufman trailer with two axles, 10,000 pounds each, Dexter axles. So I'm going to show you the removal of the existing brakes so we could replace them with these brakes. I'm going to be using a floor jack. It's a four ton floor jack that I'm going to be putting under the trailer on a section that is very strong and is recommended for lifting. This is the spot that I chose to lift the trailer. It's a, a cross beam right uh, behind the rear axle. I also use two blocks of uh, wood so I could help it with uh, lifting the trailer and I'm going to be lifting the trailer until uh, both axles and sets of uh, wheels and the axles are going to lift off the ground about half inch to one inch. Right now we got them both lifted, they're free. So I'm gonna start with removing the wheels. To remove the wheels on uh, this application, I'm using a uh, impact gun half inch with a socket of uh, one inch and one sixteen. Um, 
I'm gonna put it in reverse and I'm gonna start removing the nuts. After removing the nuts, all the nuts, then I have to remove the flange. That it's a flange that is in between the nuts and the rims. After removing the wheels, this is how the hub and drum looks like. Now we have to remove the plastic cap, which is the oil cap. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna put this lever right here to, start, uh, to have the drum uh, to stop it from turning. Then I'm gonna be using a wrench to remove the oil cap. And there's gonna be oil coming out, which we need to replace anyway. We're gonna have to put new after we install the new. And this is how it looks the nuts, the washers, the lock washers. So we are gonna start removing the drum, but before we remove the nuts, we're gonna have to go behind the drum to release the shoes that are expanded inside the drum because the drum was worn out and it has a lip, has a groove inside and a lip. It's gonna be hard to remove it without uh, releasing the two shoes so they could get closer in order to remove the drum. This is how the shoes look like. Uh, they were removed from a previous job. But I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do in order to release the, the two shoes, this one and this one, to get them closer to make it easier to take it out of the drum, after, to, to remove the drum. So the part that we're gonna have to work on is right here at the bottom. We're gonna have to spray it with some uh, WD-40 to make parts turn freely but I will show you on the axles exactly how it's getting done. Before removing the drum, before removing the nuts, I actually like to give it a little bit of a cleaning. Uh, what I'm using is starting fluid. It's a very good uh, liquid to clean uh, dirty parts. This way the tools are gonna stay cleaner. As you see, the grease and the oil gets removed. Not just that, but once you finish spraying, all the parts are gonna dry up because this uh, fluid dries up really fast. Before going under the trailer to uh, release the shoes, and before going under the trailer, make sure you install a uh, floor stand under a really strong beam to hold the trailer just in case the power jack uh, fails and starts going down you want to work safe under the trailer so make sure you put one of those strong floor stands this is how the back of the the drum and the brake system looks like basically we're gonna have to work right here we're gonna have to use a screwdriver to uh, release the shoes so the shoes get closer to make the drum come out easier now uh, we're gonna use uh, WD-40 to spray some of it inside to make the parts turn better. Since we are uh, removing the drums and the electric brake system and we're gonna throw everything away to make it easier to turn those parts to release the shoes, another way would be to pry it, to put it right here under and start bending out to open this plate easier to make it easier for you to see exactly what you're doing this is how uh, the parts look like inside after I bent the metal on the inside so there is that uh, disc in the middle that has ridges on the edges so we're gonna have to turn that uh, putting the screwdriver at the bottom of the ridges, the bottom of the disc, to push it from the bottom 
towards the inside in order for that piece to uh, tread on that bolt to release the shoes, the one on the left and then the one on the right. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna remove the drum. And in order to remove the drum, we need to reach this area here to twist it in order to release the shoes. So the shoes get closer to give space between the shoes and the drum to be able to remove the drum. So first, you know, using a hammer and a screwdriver, we bend this part of the metal inside because we're throwing the whole system away anyway. We're not trying to save it because it makes it easier to work with a bigger space instead of work through these two little holes. So after bending this in, you want to spray WD-40 on all these parts to make it easier to twist and turn. Okay, and then as you see here, we need to turn this uh, uh, disc that has uh, ridges on the, uh, on the outside. So basically we need to turn this from the bottom inside this way in order to get the bolt to get smaller for the shoes to get closer. But because there's a part in the back that is holding this locked, we need to push it in with one of the screwdrivers. There's two sections here. One is thicker, one is thinner. The piece that it's locking into the ridges of the disc, it's on the thicker side. So what you want to do is you want to put the screwdriver right here above, push it in, and after you push in, you use another screwdriver. So we're going to use one to push in. And the other one to turn so let's use this one it's pushed in and now we need to turn this down like this it's turning As you see here, after I uh, twisted that center piece with the ridges enough, you could see the gap between the drum and the shoes on both sides. So now it's gonna, right here, now it's gonna make the drum very easy to come out. So that's what I did, that center disc, I rotated from the bottom and the inside. After releasing the brake shoes uh, to remove the drum in the hub, first we have to remove the, the nut and we're going to be using a socket that it's two and a quarter for this application. Before we put the socket on the nut, we're going to have to use a screwdriver and a hammer to bend this, this part back in order to remove this one here, this one. So we have to bend uh, in this. There's actually two of them on this corner. Right here, we need to bend them back in order to twist the nut. After bending them back, as you see in this picture, they are bent back, they're not on the nut anymore. We're gonna be using the two and a quarter socket. I'm gonna turn it and we're gonna remove it. After getting it loose, then you could turn it by hand. And then you remove the retainer, the lock retainer. You could use a screwdriver to release it. Okay, put it in a section on a clean piece of carpet. And then we're going to remove the second nut. Okay, I'm gonna put it there. And then after that, we're gonna remove a washer. Okay, looks like that. I'm gonna put it on the carpet. And then we're gonna pull from
from here on the hub in order to first we could we could remove this uh, bearing and then we're gonna grab the hub from here to remove it after removing the drum this is how things look like a lot of rust a lot of parts magnet fell down already everything is dirty rusty we're gonna uh, use some sockets to remove the whole assembly after removing the drum I noticed that the inside bearing it's still on the axle and also the seal this is the inside bearing this is the seal right here so I'm gonna use a screwdriver to pry it out it comes out easy slide it down put it on a clean piece of carpet and then we have the seal that we need to remove so I'm gonna pry it with a screwdriver or I could use something like, like this, like a hammer in order to, to remove the seal after removing also the seal uh, seal is not good anymore, we're not going to use it, we're going to put a new one on the new hub and after that I'm going to clean the spindle a little bit again with uh, starting fluid To remove the whole assembly, we need to remove seven bolts that are situated right here on this plate, on the back plate. By using, uh, for the head, we're going to be using a 5 8 socket, and for the back, for the nuts, we're going to be using a uh, wrench 11 16. So we're going to use the wrench to put it in the back with the assembly. right here we're gonna hold it and then gonna we we're gonna use the gun to put it on this bolt here and we're gonna we're gonna hold the wrench by twisting the head with the gun after removing the bolts uh, you could see that the assembly is still stuck because of the rust so you take a hammer and you pound it a little bit in the back to turn it loose. After removal of the whole assembly, as you see, we have uh, some rust um, on the spindle right here that we need to clean. So first we're gonna use a uh, wire brush and we're gonna clean all the rust as much as we can with the wire brush. Also, this plate here in the back, we need to clean it. After cleaning it with the wire brush everywhere, uh, we need to check the back of the plate because the bracket for the disc brakes have to be installed behind this plate right here. So we need to check to make sure that uh, it's all flat and clean. So, looking in the back, I already noticed some welding spatter, which is right here in the back. We have this bump here from the welding plus another piece of metal right here that we need to grind. So, we're gonna check all the way around because the surface or the uh, plate in the back right here has to be really smooth in order for this flange, this bracket, because this is also smooth, has to be installed on in the back of the flange. So to clean the back of the flange, in order to eliminate the weldings, we also have even a, a bump right here, you can see it. We need to grind that, we need to grind these. So to do that, I'm gonna be using a grinder with an abrasive disc of 60 grit so I'm gonna turn it and then I'm gonna grind all the sections here as you see I uh, used uh, first of all to eliminate those bumps in the back I did uh, grinding there 
uh, even the bump that was on the, the axle right here. So you check all the way around. You do a little bit of a fine grinding in the back just to make sure that the back is smooth, just as smooth as this bracket surface. Also, I used the grinder to clean more of the rust as part of this uh, axle, the spindle. I used the grinder a little bit here to make it smooth. Uh, I cleaned everything. Uh, the section here is for the seal. Do not use the grinder on this section. If you want to clean this, if you have a little bit of rust on this, then you need to use sandpaper manually. It looks like this. Okay. I have it for, from a spool. So basically the sandpaper is 180 grit. Uh, you don't want anything rougher than that. So you put it, you put it over the spindle and the section of the seal and you keep twisting it. You know, you use both hands, one on the right, one on the left. You pull down by pulling one hand at a time to do a circular motion to clean this area. Do not use anything rougher and do not use motion this way only this way you know you you keep sending it that way after sending and cleaning all the rust and making the surfaces smooth especially in the back here and especially here by the seal uh, you want to protect the bare metal with a little bit of grease so what i use is some heavy duty grease and i am going to apply a thin layer of grease and First of all, on the spindle here, and then also the back plate. You want to grease the back plate with a thin layer because in case you need to remove it in the future, you don't want parts to be stuck together from rust. So I also grease also the front here, but just make sure that you leave a very thin layer of grease, not thick. So you spread it evenly and you spread it really, really smooth. The next step is to install the caliper flange, the caliper bracket over the flange, this flange in the back of the flange. Um, by the way, this is spindle number 99 from Dexter. It's a Dexter axle. So we're gonna we're gonna take the bracket, we're gonna put it behind the flange, and then we're gonna use two inch grade eight bolts. They're really high quality, high strength. You insert them from the front. It's hard to do it with one hand. After putting the caliper bracket in the back of the flange, by putting the two inch grade eight bolts from the front and then the nuts that are also grade eight. So you put the four top bolts, then you put the second half of the bracket and then you put another three bolts you see them here after you do that and you tighten the nuts uh, on the bolts by hand then you put the two bolts one on the right one on the left to connect the two pieces of the bracket together by using a uh, again a bolt that it's uh, this time two and a half inch long and uh, all these bolts are 716 uh, with a tread of 14 coarse tread make sure you use grade 8 bolts so after you do that you tighten everything by hand and then after you make sure you give it a little bit of a shake to make sure that it's all in place and that, that these two pieces are together first you tighten the seven bolts that are on the flange and once you're done with that then you're gonna tighten the other two bolts that are one on each side by using uh, five and a half fixed wrench for the front. You put it here, you hold the front, and then you use in the back a uh, 1116 wrench that has got a ratchet. You use it on the back and the nuts, so you hold the front and then the back, you twist it until everything is tightened. After you finish tightening the seven bolts on the flange, then you're gonna use the same wrenches to tighten the bolts on the side. So after installing the bracket, uh, tighten everything one by one. You, you cannot tighten just one all the way, just a little bit. A, a little bit on this one, a little bit on that one, a little bit on this one. So you keep going and cross until everything is tightened. Um, really good. Also these ones, 
a little bit here, a little bit there, you finish uh, tightening all the bolts. After that, you want to take the caliper and you want to put it on top of the bracket in its uh, right place to make sure that everything fits properly on these channels. So you put it on one side here, like this, and then you lower it on the other side. And just as I expected, this side, the front is good, but this side is too tight. And that's because sometimes when we install these brackets, especially these bolts here, if this flange is not completely flat, it's gonna warp a little bit the bracket and it's gonna close in these corners here. So in order to make these slide properly back and forth, you take it and this corners, this one and this one that are the tight section, not this, you put it down and you grind it a little bit with grit 80. After you do the grinding on both sides, on both ends, okay, so it's actually this corner and this corner here. So after that, you give it another try. You put it the right direction, make sure. See, as I see, it's still tight, the back it's still tight on this section so I take the see it's supposed to slide like this but just to make sure that it's not too tight I'm gonna grind a little bit more to give it more play so we try it again put it down and as you see it slides really good nice and smooth you slide it back and forth and then you take it out and we're gonna prepare the rest of the stuff to install the drum and I will show you the process step by step okay the next step is to assemble the hub with the spacer and uh, the disc the rotor this rotor is also built for uh, ABS sensors. This is the rotor, this is the hub, 10,000 pound hub, and this is the spacer that goes in between. So what I would like to do first, before installing the spacer here, you know, throw a little bit of uh, grease, just, a, just very light grease over the surface where the hub and the spacer is touching. This way it's gonna make it easy for the removal in the future. And rust is not going to keep the parts stuck so once this is done i am going to be putting the spacer over and the bolts that we're using to put these two together are the silver bolts that are provided in the kit it's a 12 point head also i like to use a little bit of grease on this section here so what we do is we put it over like this again it makes it easier to remove so just this section here this one I don't touch it because that has a lock paste to keep it from twisting so as you see just a little bit of grease enough to make it easy easier to remove in the future okay. one more this is the last one I put it over I twist them by hand a little bit just to make sure that it's catching a little bit of a thread. And then once this is done, I'm gonna be using, as you see here, a 12 point socket, half inch. Make sure it's a 12 point, put it in the gun. And then we're gonna start turning them little by little. And the opposite side. Don't tighten it all the way, just until it's touching. use the opposite 
Okay, after everything is down, then you could take one by one and tighten it. Once this is done, the next step is to put the rotor over in this position. And once again, I like to use a little bit of grease, very light grease, a thin layer of grease, just to make it easier to remove parts in the future. This would be when you need to replace the disc when it wears out. So once the grease is over, then I take the flange and I put it over and then what I like to do again on this cruise with the hex uh, female head, again, put a little bit of grease to make it easier to remove in the future. So one by one, I put grease. Now we're going to be using a different socket. This is a quarter inch, as you see here, quarter inch hex Torx bead. Put it in, and again, we screw just a little bit until it touches the bottom. Not all the way, so again, you go and cross. One by one, not all the way, just enough, just enough to touch the bottom. So now we could tighten them all. And in this situation, I like to go the opposite again. Make sure the silver bolts go between the hub and the spacer and the other ones with the small head they go between the rotor and the spacer so this is ready to be installed okay the next step is to install the seal the bearing and the seal we have two bearings this one is inside bearing which is the one that goes inside here on the inside of the the wheel inside of the axle this bearing is a uh, Timken top quality company uh, model 387A. The outside bearing is 25580, but right now we're going to work with the inside bearing. We're going to take it out. First, we drop it down with the smaller part on the inside, this way. We put it on the racer, we spin it, make sure that it goes smooth. Then the next step, we take a little bit of grease and put it on the wall on the inside where the seal is going to be installed. Again, a very thin layer not too much just enough for the seal to be pressed down easily the seal has one side that it's metal the other side is plastic it's, it spins like this the inside stays the exterior spins so we need to install it metal down uh, the seal is a 10-051 that's the size for this one for the 10,000 pound uh, axle for spindle number 99 uh, also, it says here air side, which means that the metal goes down and this is towards the air section, the inside, the metal part is on the oil section. So we drop it down, we try to keep it as straight as possible. And then we take a piece of aluminum plate, we put it on one side, 
and we start pounding it a little by little all the way around we gotta keep pounding it at the highest spots just so it goes down pretty much flat and straight okay and then you could also help yourself by putting an extension and you start pounding little by little you don't want to push one side too much down you want to do it little by little and you want to use a soft metal like aluminum when you pound it down and you have to pound it until the part of the rubber on the seal is going to be flush to the to the hub you don't want to pound it lower more than that okay you take the parts out and then you use your finger all the way around to see that things are flush once it's flush this is ready to be installed this is how it looks like so this has to be flush rubber and metal all the same level do not push it down too much so this is ready to be installed step is to install the whole assembly over the spindle with the bearings just so uh, from the previous uh, instructions the inside bearing is already installed the seal is already installed so what i do to make it easier to push everything inside i put a little bit of grease on the section where the seal is going to be pressed in again to make it easier to slide in and then also a little bit of grease where the bearing the inside bearing is going to be sitting again same reason do not put too much grease just very thin layer of grease another one is going to be over the section of the outside bearing which sits right here okay and now we're ready to install the whole assembly so first we put this assembly first this try to keep it straight we put the inside the outside bearing again pin pin model 25580 for the exterior we put the washer first we put one of the nuts And then we use the two and a quarter socket and we start spinning to press the whole assembly inside. And then we keep watching here in the back to make sure that we keep pounding it this way. Now you could do it by hand a little more. This is the section, the, the section that where the seal gets installed in the back. Okay, now as I see, everything is installed. We keep spinning it. We twist it a little bit. You want to make sure that it spins without being under like a brake. So now we put the swasher with the bends in. We try to see if they match what we had before. And as a matter of fact, it did match. Okay. Now we're gonna put the exterior nut. Once again, we give it a spin. It spins freely, doesn't have a play. It's all solid. And the next step is to install the caliper and the brake shoes. Next step is to install the caliper and the brake shoes. Before we do that, you want to put a little bit of grease on these tracks here for the caliper to slide easier. A little bit on each side one on this side one on the other side again not too much then you also you want to put a little bit of grease on this side of these brackets that get installed here 
Same reason you want the caliper to slide smooth and not get stuck during the operation. So we do both plates, only put the grease on the side where the caliper slides. After that, you put the inside pad, which is smaller than the exterior. You put it on the inside right here. It's got the right grooves. You go against the, the rotor. Then the next step is to install the caliper, but you also want to put a little bit of grease where we did the grinding earlier for sliding. Also to prevent it from getting rusted. Okay, so once we have the grease on, the next step is to put this other bracket. So we install it by hand until it goes on its place, like this. You hold it with one hand, you go over, and then once you put it down, as you see, it's gonna have a little bit of a play back and forth. You wanna push this all the way towards the inside, so this thing touches here. We put the two plates, see, this is where we have the grease here, so the caliper, when it does this move, it slides on this plate. It comes with the bolts, so you put one bolt here, we put the other bracket on the other side, we put the bolt here, and then we're going to be using a 916 ratchet wrench to tighten the bolts. We're going to put the bolts down but not tighten it yet. We're gonna do the same thing here. And before we tighten these bolts all the way, you need to make sure that, again, the caliper is pushed in all the way, and also, see this bracket has an overhaul, you wanna make sure that it's centered. So you push this, you center the plate, and then, you tighten the bolt while you hold on the plate. So this side is done. Again, push it, center the plate. Okay, that's tight. Make sure both sides are tight. Make sure this is pushed in. And this completes installing the caliper with the two brackets, the bolts and the pads. So now the next move is to install the wheels. Uh, this I did not tighten yet, I just you know, tightened by hand, as you see here it's spinning. We want to do the final tightening after we have the wheels when we spill the wheels. And also we want to do the wheels first before we put the plastic cap, this way we don't damage the cap while we install the, the wheels. So now we're going to install the wheels back. For the wheels before installing the wheels I recommend a little bit of grease on the studs and also very little grease on this section of the hub to make the wheels going uh, easier not just that but for future removal if these things don't get rusted you know they uh, it's gonna be make it much easier also this flange uh, I put a little bit of grease here where the nuts are gonna be spinning to tighten the wheel and a little bit of uh, grease in the back that is holding the wheel. So let's do the installation of the wheels Get it closer like this. Then we put this bar under, one foot on the left side, bar on the right side, make it easier. One is in. The next one has to be installed with the valve on the opposite of this valve, meaning the next wheel has to have the valve right here on this section. So we're gonna twist it until we get the valve on the right side. Okay, and we're gonna follow the studs. It's almost ready. Again, put your foot on the left side to help it. Use the bar on the right side. You twist it, you push it all the way in. We put this flange, and 
then we'll start putting the nuts. For the beginning, you just put two nuts, one on the left, one on the right. And you use the gun to get these two, two pieces closer. Okay. Spin it a little bit, make sure that the valves are on both sides. Now we put the rest. a little bit, not too much. Again, you do it in cross. Opposite. So now, a little bit on everything. And now you're going to do it all the way. Again, as you see, it spills freely. Now we're gonna have to tighten this nut and then put the cover. The next step is to tighten the nut, but to also make sure that the wheels are still spinning freely. And also you grab the tire from here and you shake it this way to see if you have a play. So you use the two and a quarter socket, you tighten it, no play, you turn it, it does spin freely. So once this is done, we need to take a screwdriver and we need to bend back a couple of these this, uh, pieces from the washer. Okay, so we bend it back like this and we could do also another one here. Okay, you also want to take a hammer and hit it all the way until it touches the nut. So now this is done, it's locked in, you will not turn back because these two pieces are bent in. So now we put the oil cap, we take a little bit of grease and you put it on the gasket and also a little bit on the tread. And you also want to put a little bit of grease right here on this edge where the gasket is going to touch the hub when we turn it. Okay. When this is done, we twist this back in. 